Are you looking to streamline read alouds in your home or maybe begin them in the first place? Today, I hope you find this video helpful as I'm going to be sharing five tips for how to help read alouds go smoothly in your home or in your home school. Hello guys and welcome to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Megan. This is going to be our ninth year homeschooling and I am a mama to six kids. My oldest is in middle school and the youngest is three. Now, as I said in this video today, I'm gonna be sharing some tips that I hope you guys find helpful. Some things that I have found over the years in our home to be helpful in regards to doing read alouds. Now, whether you do read alouds in your home already, if you do, that's awesome. If you are looking for where to start, then I think that's awesome as well. And as I said, I hope you find this video helpful. Let's get started with tip number one. Tip number one would be to start young. Now, there may be many of you here <laughs> that are watching and you're like, well, I missed that window. You did not miss the window. But if you do have very young ones, then I would suggest that you definitely start with them now. Start them with any age, but if you do have really little ones, it's a great time to start. The reason that it's great to start read alouds with little ones is because literally, if you start them at the age of babies, whether it's just picture books, if they grow up under that from the beginning, they're not gonna know any different and they automatically kind of learn how you act during a read aloud, how you listen during a read aloud. And so that would be my first tip. But as I said, if your children are not really young anymore, don't let that deter you from starting read alouds. And I hope that the rest of the tips will help if you are starting them with kids who are starting to get a little bit older. Now, tip number two is to be flexible. So even though we did start read alouds with my kids, literally from the time they were babies, that doesn't mean that read aloud time always goes perfectly. So what does read aloud time even look like? It varies from day to day. We have a designated read aloud time during our morning time together as a family as we're getting our homeschool day started. But I'll be honest with you guys, our actual read alouds, our chapter books, don't always happen during that time. Because the reality is, is that I have a three-year-old that can get quite squirrely, and I even have some elementary age kids that can get squirrely. And so sometimes the, our time varies in when we actually sit down to do our read alouds. Sometimes we do them more than once or twice a day. Sometimes we even do them in the car, which I'll explain later on in the video. But my point in all of this is just don't try to force it. If you're getting frustrated, if your kids are getting frustrated, if it is just not going well at that moment at all, abandon ship. Because the purpose of read aloud time is to really build relationship. So there can be a few factors that feed into maybe why a read aloud time may not be going so well, why it may not be going smoothly, other than just the typical everyday interruptions caused by toddlers or whatever. Another reason that may be causing the disjointedness during read aloud time could actually be because of a literature selection. And that brings me to tip number three. Choose great literature. Now, I'm not gonna get all uppity and say to only choose things that follow this, 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 and this. That's not what I'm gonna say at all. And what I mean by great literature is literature that is good quality, that is very, very important, but also is equally engaging. Because if your children are not engaged, if they're not interested in what you're reading, it's gonna be really difficult for you guys to stick it out through that read aloud and it actually be profitable. So that's why it's important to choose good literature. Now, in regards to that, I do want to say, a lot of people I think have this idea that good literature is a chapter book. It does not have to be. And I think that that's something really important to note is that even kids who are in upper elementary and middle school, seventh grade son, he still enjoys when I have a picture book in our read aloud basket. 
never underestimate the power of a picture book at any age seriously read alouds like i said are not just chapter books enjoy a picture book from time to time because there is some excellent literature out there in the form of picture books especially for very young children in regards to where to find titles of quality literature, I have a few different places that are go-tos for me. My stepmom was very diligent in instilling this in me from a very young age as well. And so that appreciation for read-alouds has always been there for me. So exposure through reading them myself, but then also it, I'm interested in researching good quality literature for my children. So some of those places that I go are Read Aloud Revival, which is an excellent resource, whether you listen to her podcast, read her book, or visit her website. She has all kinds of book lists broken down by age, broken down by gender, broken down by seasons and months of the year. She has a lot of different lists you can sort through, and you're sure to find something good there. And not all of her stuff is like older literature. She likes to do a lot of reviews on newer things that have been screened and dubbed appropriate. So that's another reason why I really like her website. Sarah McKenzie, sorry, I didn't say her name, but Sarah McKenzie is the one who does Read Aloud Revival, if you're not familiar with that already. Another place I like to look is one of the very first places I was exposed to in the homeschooling realm, and that was actually a book called Honey for a Child's Heart. It is a Charlotte Mason book, so you are definitely going to find high quality literature in there. And it just has some really great suggestions for different age ranges. The other two places that I like to look are Sunlight has some great book lists and of course Bookshark is Sunlight as well. It's the secular version and they have great book lists as well. And then also I love to visit the Heritage Mom blog. She has some amazing um, literature lists as well, especially in making sure that you are incorporating diverse literature onto your shelves as well. So those are some tips for choosing great literature. The fourth thing I would say in streamlining and making a smooth read aloud time is actually to engage their hands, especially younger kids. But even some of my older kids need this sometimes. So on my shelf right here, I actually have these boxes that we use only during our homeschool time. I recently switched them over to these boxes and I'm loving them. But this is actually just some things that I keep on our homeschool shelf only for only during homeschool time for engaging activities. So we have magnetiles, we have kinetic sand in one of them, and then this one right here is bristle blocks. Another thing that my kids like to do while we're reading is uh, just taking a sketchbook and drawing different things or drawing with what we're reading about or whatever that may look like. So I usually give them options of like they can play with things, they can sit and listen, or they can draw in a notebook. But the big caveat is that they need to keep their mouths quiet and not make a lot of noise with their toys. <laughs> So that's a little tip there I have found super, super helpful, especially on those little squirrely days where they're just little wiggle worms. Okay, so here is the fifth thing, and this is kind of a secret weapon. I think a lot of people have a preconceived notion that your read-alouds have to be you reading aloud, but they don't. Mamas, you can use audiobooks. <laughs> And this is so, so helpful, especially on days when your voice may be under the weather or maybe you just don't feel like reading that day or maybe you need to hold a baby or cuddle a toddler or whatever. Or maybe you want to engage with your kids while you listen to someone else read as well. So audiobooks are a great, great addition to your read aloud time. And they're great for something to do in the car other than we don't have a DVD player. But, you know, if it was there, I think my kids would be tempted to use it. But um, when we're driving in the car, a lot of times I will put an audiobook on and it keeps the little chitter chatter down some. <laughs> and the car arguments at bay. And so, audiobooks. Now, there's a few places I go to get these. 
I, n I never pay for audiobooks. That's kind of a secret for me. I, it's fine if you want to. I just don't pay for audiobooks. The only audiobooks we listen to are the ones we can check out through our library either in hard copy like CD form or through the Libby app on my phone using my library card or we actually subscribe to an app called Scribd. I will put links to everything I talk about in this video down in the description. Scribd gives you access for a monthly fee, gives you access to a ton of audiobooks and actual like ebooks and stuff, podcasts, all kinds of different things. I'm loving it, but we usually find something to listen to on one of those two avenues, either the Libby app or the Scribd app and it's excellent. And the other thing about audiobooks is a lot of times you can find dramatized versions of audiobooks. So if it's a tough one to get through and you can find an, a dramatized version of that audiobook, then that's going to make it so much more engaging for your kids than if you're just trying to read through a really difficult piece of literature to your kids. So audiobooks are your friends and they're not considered shortcuts. <laughs> so those are my five tips. I hope that you guys found something helpful here today. I hope that you'll stick around my channel, hit that subscribe button down below, and press the bell for notifications, and I will catch you guys on future videos. Thanks so much, guys, for hanging out with me today, and have a blessed day.